today we will discuss the topic carcinoma esophagus and in this topic we will discuss the discuss the workup the diagnosis the workup the diagnosis the staging of carcinoma esophagus why is carcinoma esophagus important carcinoma esophagus is a difficult topic because the carcinoma esophagus is a peculiar organ which goes from the anatomical jungle to the thorax where there is a negative intrathoracic pressure and then to the abdomen where there is a positive intraabdominal pressure so it is a simple organ which traverses through different complex circumstances to different complex points so approaching carcinoma esophagus is difficult due to this reasons approaching esophagus anatomically is difficult due to these reasons now what is the demography of carcinoma esophagus how is carcinoma esophagus distributed we can see that it is more common in the china korea region china korea japan this is these are the areas which is more common i remember my unit chief when i learned the surgery of carcinoma esophagus from this from japan and korea now if coming to the different histology of carcinoma esophagus carcinoma esophagus can be a squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma there are other cell types the most common is squamous cell carcinoma followed by adenocarcinoma both these carcinomas both squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma are more common in males than females you can see in esophagus the upper two thirds of the esophagus squamous cell carcinoma is more common and the lower one third adenocarcinoma is more common the most more the most of the malignancies the most amount of malignancies in esophagus occurs in the middle third middle one third so, and squamous cell carcinoma is more common in middle one third than the upper uh, than the lower or the upper one third so most common location is middle one third and the most common histology is squamous cell carcinoma and in the lower cards lower part it is adenocarcinoma coming to the pre malignant conditions of the esophagus when do we when will when does a patient when a patient presents with dysphagia how do we know whether the, whether this condition this esophageal web or this barrett's esophagus or this achalasia cardia is will it well, is there a chance for malignancy in this patient let us see the pre malignant conditions pre malignant conditions of the esophagus include plummer wilson syndrome tylosis achalasia cardia and barrett's esophagus you see of which the plummer wilson syndrome tylosis and achalasia cardia causes squamous cell carcinoma and the barrett's esophagus adenocarcinoma is more common than adenocarcinoma in barrett's esophagus there is only adenocarcinoma only occurs now coming to the plummer wilson syndrome what are the features of plummer wilson syndrome how will we know whether the patient has who has come to us as plummer wilson syndrome the classical features include dysphagia due to esophageal web iron deficiency anemia you can see a coelonychia the spoon shaped nails and glossitis these are the classical features of plummer wilson syndrome it predisposes to squamous cell carcinoma you can remember with an easy mnemonic digs d i g s d dysphagia due to esophageal web i iron deficiency anemia g glossitis and s squamous cell carcinoma next is tylosis tylosis is an uncommon familial syndrome in which we see classically a thickening of the palms and soles or skin of the palms and soles next is achalasia cardia you can see in this a classical bird beak appearance of achalasia cardia the patient presents with dysphagia should we treat achalasia cardia yes because achalasia cardia is a pre malignant condition also achalasia cardia there is an 8% chance for malignancy and squamous cell and the malignancy is squamous cell carcinoma is more common in achalasia cardia next comes the barrett's esophagus due to the advent of the western diet many many areas in, in many areas in the world due to the increase in the western diet there is an increase in the gastroesophageal reflux disease and there is an increase in the incidence of barrett's esophagus so barrett's esophagus is much more common in the world than it was earlier so barrett's esophagus is a pre malignant condition and it predisposes to adenocarcinoma barrett's esophagus is the squamous it is the columnar metaplasia of the low, uh, cells of the lower part of the esophagus the squamous cells in the lower part of the esophagus get converted into the glandular epithelium from which 
the malignancy can arise. Now, what is the biological behavior of carcinoma esophagus? For this, we have to know the layers of esophagus. You see, the esophagus, keep it in mind, esophagus has no serosa. Esophagus has no serosa. The layers of the esophagus include the mucosa, submucosa, muscularis propria, propria and the adventitia. Adventitia is the tissue around this muscularis propria. There is no well-formed serosa in esophagus. And for this reason, what happens is, some, once the muscularis propria is penetrated, the chance for spreading to the surrounding structures of the carcinoma is fast in esophagus. And another important feature is that the submucosal lymphatic plexus in the esophagus is very much. There is an interconnection inter in the lymphatic plexus in the esophagus. And for this reason, the longitudinal spread of the carcinoma through these lymph channels is also more. So, so that is that, that is the another part regarding the spread of carcinoma esophagus. So the, the chance for radial spread is also high. The chance for the longitudinal spread is also high. That is the importance of carcinoma esophagus. Now, for this, because of this very spread, the symptoms of the esophagus, because the spread of the esophagus is early, we should identify carcinoma esophagus earlier, or there can be the patient will present, present in an advanced state. So, how will we find? So, what are the symptoms of carcinoma esophagus? Carcinoma esophagus can present early or it can present late. If it presents early, the patient presents with heartburn, regurgitation and indigestion. Similar to simple features of gastroesophageal reflux disease. You cannot actually distinguish, you can, you can classically see that there is no dysphagia. Why there is no dysphagia? If for dysphagia to occur in esophagus, carcinoma esophagus, this tumor has to become quite large. Tumor has to become quite large to, due to the distensibility of the esophagus. So, dysphagia and weight loss are generally a late presentation of carcinoma esophagus. Another is coughing, choking and aspiration. When does this occur? If you have seen coughing, choking and aspiration in carcinoma esophagus, you should always suspect a tracheoesophageal fistula in carcinoma esophagus. Another is hoarseness of voice. If there is hoarseness of voice, it means there is involvement of the recurrent laryngeal nerve by carcinoma esophagus. 